Um, hold on, let me see. Oh, awesome. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secret of the town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that um, we are we're really far into the game, so it this is very much very much spoiler territory. So yeah. Um, let's uh. Wait, we already oh. What, let's weep, shall we? Hold on, wait, hold on. No, 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 you know what? I'm gonna try this one, but Malice. And yeah. There was a Malice lurking behind those eyes, like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder something wasn't right he didn't know why but something was telling luca to get out of there i just want this all to be over of course i'm sure it will all be work out soon enough i should get going i told rossi i check out i check for rollo at the treehouse luca twisted free of nuncrete's grasp of course luca you know your dad and i were good friends back in the day you can't come to me with anything. Anything at all. Oh yeah, that was the part where we to we like we were like, "Oh yeah, we can tell him anything." And and uh we we can tell him about the whole thing. And he was like, Oh, you shouldn't have gone into this, and he he trapped us in the tele telephone booth. Yeah, I knew I knew we sh we shouldn't have done that, but but we did. Oh, the these festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival. It would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone the two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Now that I know who the who this little guy is i'm like mm. i look at him differently he looked down and muttered in a gruff voice mama always told me my problems would look smaller once i grew up but my problems always seem to grow right along with me heavens i sense big trouble ahead uh okay let me Wait at the tree house in case Rolo shows up. Oh yeah, Rolo got kidnapped in this in this branch. Identify yourself, please. Nelly Mold will. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. 
Um. Damn. Whoa! You could get a rash to the noggin and sneak up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin, Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kinda late to be junkin? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? But ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded papers and coffee cups. Well, I'd rather get going. I see nothing if you see nothing. See what? Exactly. Hmm. Um. Oh my gosh, wait. I forgot I could jump. Hey Jetson, have you seen Rolo come b this way by any chance? Pray not. As elusive as the fish in this here palm. Hmm. Rolo! He aired a long holler into the woods. Rolo! Huh. Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. That's such a nice tree house. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame. Wait, soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca Aww. turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Aww. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Oh! Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Oh my Luca gosh. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Oh! Oh! Wait! Is that Rolo? It's an adult Rolo! Oh my gosh, he got into the goo. He's all grown up now. Stop right there. Or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. 
Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Look at you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. <laughs> Where is he? Ah, uh, uncle? Look at quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca! Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know, they threw me a, a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look! Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, huh? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can be chooser. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet too? Dang, Pa just made me a new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open the cage? Kinda. I, at least I think I did. It was all a bit of blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Oh, so does that mean that he's skipping through all of puberty? No puberty at all? Nice. This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Look at don't, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger, huh? Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah, take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly really bizarre just happened and I need help. I don't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Uh, no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. It seems a little old. He seems a little old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Well, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little tree house? I mean, you mean... I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve our security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you have said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Oh, okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair. So... Oh, yeah, so... Um... 
that the bully i don't remember i don't i don't remember his name he sh like he splashed the green goo on on beck's hair and it kind of turned white now it's blue <laughs> so i dyed it with some sort of some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me okay just need to play it cool and hope no one notices notices what oh nothing i was just come over here let me have a look honey what in the world did you do to your hair i don't know some people just wanna just want the chloe price look i just kind of felt like a change this is going to be take forever to grow out you were the one who said that change was a good thing right i was talking about your mother's new job i was talking about us moving well i guess i just took your lesson too hard Ilona tried to put on a smile before I forget, I came up to tell you that Nelly had to go to into work tonight. Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to to get some things done f before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade A creep. Beck? He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You're not going to ruin this job for Nelly. It means too much for her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her, uh, to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. Just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nelly come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. Wait, no, I didn't do the death stare now. Summer, stop. Stop inventing stuff, okay? I kept looking at the screen. <laughs> I looked at the screen the whole time! Stop it. <laughs> you need to look presentable for the festival. But, not another peep. She sighed. You were waiting for it. <laughs> down it back sympathetically. <laughs> you cannot prove it. <laughs> She sighed and after a moment looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if they decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you look then. Very funny. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, mom. Oh my gosh, that, that dog. Hold on a sec. Doggy. Calm down. 
Pepper doesn't want to stay in my arms. Pepper just want mommy. <laughs> He's gonna continue for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> First of all, th this town does not suck. Second of all, you, all, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's your fault. Your, it's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of look like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? This next part is the, the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. I'm <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Pepper is still a puppy. <coughs> Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr! Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. <coughs> Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Keep the pleasantries. What's the your report on our new elite researcher of deep engineering? Nelly Mode Will seems to be integrating nicely. At this moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left up by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know I have how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her. Long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We're in the end game, Bill. After your fa failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford any to take any risk. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest when you wish, maybe we should delay for just a bit. Oh, it's just we seem to be rushing to hit the festival deadline and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand I'm just what was best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all you've done for me. Bill, I've made this very clear for you. I brought you in to make Run, things run smoothly not to have opinions of course sir chin up bill you're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of yes sir thank you sir whoa yeah just so we're clear when they said loose ends they were talking about murder right like actually killing someone capital murder look I gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs who is the f this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Kurt is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the has she talked of about the job much? Not really. 
she said she was going to continue and work, come in and continue to work the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think the body at the warehouse was the person Beck's mom re came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nelly's predecessor got a loose ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get to your mom be out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? That creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this, help, this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it really just a uh, welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, there's here's the reception area. There's a big room marked the founder's office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Rolo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter six, the heist. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. All right, quick recap. Rollo, you're gonna talk to Roxy? Cordially, without her and Fizz, and this whole thing could go bust. Mm -hmm. Me, Cordial, is, is my middle name. Uh huh. And how do you plan to explain your new? He waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Mm -hmm. Ah, she'll be so happy. I'm alive. She won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. And Beck. You're sure Lona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understand the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you gonna persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. Oh, Iggy and Tish? I don't know. They still hate us in, on this timeline, huh? Uh, anything else you want to tell us? No? Okay. Um, where... Okay, Jeff, Iggy, and Tish. Hmm, where's everybody? Yeah. Wait, the oh yeah, she's still here. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admired the conviction. But can he really pull through? Mm. What about the 
this way? Ah. You ever wonder why an adequate cultural company employs an ar army of survey takers? The clipboards, they say they're just trying to make us happy. Do they want to make us happy? Or just figure out what makes us happy? An important distinction. I'm so confused where everybody is. Oh, there's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. What can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. It is a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean... I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're gonna break into the headquarters and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. Eh, hey, you see, I knew you kids were alright. Great, so you'll help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Oh wow, we have a lot of options. Oh yeah, junk. Junk! Yeah, what of it? Sunny, I've got more junk than a king of than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Luca wasn't ready to give up so easily. He shouted out again. Poop! Shit! Yeah, it's all shit. I started helping. Ain't that some shit. Hey. <laughs> then, uh, crooked. Crooked. God, they're all crooks. Like cockroaches. Step one out and another one... Another comes scurrying along to take its place. Hi, hi. Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide then. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff that they all do, but you'll never hear them say I hid from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. Was that you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I've got just a thing. Why were I did the crate should come in handy? That ain't gonna be free, you know? I'm thinking five bags of sour gobs should cover it. Put it on my tab. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing back first thing in the morning. Yeah, it wasn't poop. It wasn't poop. It was, uh, call him a coward. <laughs> okay, hold on, be right back. Allergies. Oh, allergies. Okay, where are the two bullies? Here? Nope. What about this way? Oh, there they are. Hey, Tish, look who it is. Look out, are you really here to try to tick us, tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. Thank you raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. 
Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of... Uh, shit to each other. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. Yeah, not wrong. But lately, life has been kinda... Uh... Crooked, you know? Crooked. Yeah, well, that's always crook. Get over it. We ain't interested. Ah, dang it. Luca knew they'd need Iggy and Tish to pull this off. He tried again. Okay, shit. Iggy gave a reluctant... Strange, you know? He considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if truth means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into perennial harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, my, look at Van Horn, I'm impressed. After all this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine, but not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. With a quick nod, Luca was off. Did you hear that, Tish? Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. Aww. Chapter 7. Into the Hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff... Iggy and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Rollo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Just stay calm, Rollo. You can do this. Got your delivery here. A delivery? I don't have anything in my nose about delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. I had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that, that it can be kept secret. Rolo sighed, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one of the records. Damn, Rolo! Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Yeah! Our harvest awaits. Rolo beat it! What a good bluff. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Oh, well, I'll just check. He stammered and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain the, to the founder why I'm late. Well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you see your name was again? I'm um, panicked. A harvest awaits, sir. That's the uh, restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits. 
Ready to light this candle, Tish? Yup. Suck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? The distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I've got a job to do. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on! Just buzz me in already! Okay, okay. Ah! Phew! That was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure. When in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. Alright, everyone knows what to do. Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck. In case he needs some muscle. I'll head east to the founder's office. You have to you two be safe. Hmm. Oh, that's odd. There's not even cu in cups for the water. Yeah, well, you have to put your mouth under the nozzle and suck on it like it's a titty, you know? That's how it works. Uh... <laughs> a hall to nowhere. What's going on here? Hmm. Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. <laughs> no, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me in. Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up and when they and when they were distracted I ran. Dang, okay, I should stick you should stick with me. We've got a plan. Don't stress Solomon! Don't stress Solomon! Solomon's fa facade briefly faltered. We? Oui? Yes, Rollo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thanks, heaven you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't just leave yet. But they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you're, you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah, he was trying to lead us away. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you or else I might have missed it. L truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Lock. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you... How we could possibly defeat the lock like that. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. What if it is the founder? Somber. I've got some news for you. I've got some news for you. I guess you weren't there last stream. I don't know what sort of business you're up to, but I like it. She mind a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. Howdy. Good afternoon. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. 
Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Roll on, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Wait, Tabin, we're stuck at the door locked door marked number 24601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Sure, you don't have a way to get around the... To... You surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Luca mm. pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. Are you smart, Cookie. How, how did you just guess that? Oh, it's just an absurd password Rolo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. <laughs> or oh, they were thinking several uh, moves ahead and not expecting anyone to get something so simple. These uh, villain types always end up outsmart outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Well, I think you should. I think I think this should do it. Bingo, bingo! Doors open. Luca, you never felt to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We've he, we're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca. I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap! We've got company! Luca, must go faster! What sec? I can't think with all that this noise. He quickly skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is! 13806, go go go! Curse these fumbling hands, my apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help Luca. No, 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 don't trust Solomon! Oh man, no water cups. Rollo! Oh my gosh, Rollo. I'm begging you. Rolo, are you okay? Rolo, come in! Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms, they're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost them. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. Oh, no. <laughs> Make a break for it. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there after them. Okay, I think I work. Roxy and Fitz have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rollo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we got time. Entering Nelly's office now. Mom! Oh honey, what did you do to your hair? I thought you'd be happy. I finally used that young chemist's lab kit. You should have a knack for making incredibly proud me incre incredibly proud in the most frustrating frustrating ways. We need to get out of here. <laughs> me, we? Who's your adult friend? I'm not an adult at all. Ever heard of Grove Spur? I had mo uh, more of a Grove Spew. 
Mm, that's not possible. Nelly leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial bending on the enamels of the mortars, consistent with tempest liquor liquid mine exposure is that what you call the gung they forced me to drink you drink it oh oh no they told me it was only being tested on plants oh Bex, sweet i promise i didn't know mom what the hell is going on at this place i was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime a novel chemical compound was discovered on the beacon pines in a well spring they called it the source they called it Tempest or Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source in using small amounts of Tempest liqu Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to har- Vest in a fraction of at the time, but it led to complications. Mm -hmm. The foul harvest. Perennial ha came to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. <laughs> but liqu Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Mm -hmm. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. <laughs> so the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. It, I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott. Harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliability, manipulate an organism age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? We sighed. You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered the oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Mm. Oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation could never make. So I fixed them and now I get to replace and it my enter entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Those clothes were all hands me down anyway. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility. I sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kerr had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. This is why you, we gotta get you out of here. I just... Like now! Wait, the vial! Finally solved the, the chemical equation allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Look at, we've got Dr. Bowen Will heading your way now. Roger that, be careful. <laughs> Alright, everything's on track. And what is your plan of escape? We will go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. <laughs> Poor Luca, you, you're trusting the wrong person. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard drink for a hard bin. No, even this alcohol is arrogant. Solomon muttered inaudibly. I should just mutter you right now. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're no bother at all. <laughs> Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system? Time card locks? Payroll? You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. He's the co-founder. <laughs> they are co-founders? Confusion. Dang. This might be good stuff. <laughs> They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as he suspected.
It looks like the founder was helping Curve plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? <laughs> Only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. So warm. You must have been here recently. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. You're gonna, we're gonna get out of this, I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it! Lock! That was close. Then, when we left the Nelly's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Rolo, before we start tossing blame around, is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. <laughs> what now? Don't look at me, I'm officially retired from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Everyone else auto up? Oops. Oops! I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Mode will. A brief reintroduction is in order. We never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child. The powerful enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest, valentine fertilizer. All connected by single thread, yours truly. But that's... Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Yes, now you've got it. Tempest, look at mine. You, you discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. You want pizza now? You always want pizza. But yeah, now I want pizza too. Very good, Dr. Mode Will. Very good. Though the discovery was intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. And the effects went a little too far for my taste. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Your favorite? Oh, pizza. Pizza, pizza, yeah. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. May I present to you the eighth wonder of the... Before he could finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Whoa, this sounds this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually we do. We just did a whole evil villain mo you just did a whole evil villain monologue thingy about it. Casually toss the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. Seize him! Luca! Over here! Move another inch and I'll smash it. She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan? I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or if you're lucky, nothing happens, then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency? He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. 
We both know that this is the o this is only one way to this she ends. Looked to Nelly shakily with a dispirited nod. Nelly sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. Hi, hi, hi. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. We can't trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension. Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out here and make the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? Hmm, I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be part of something great. But the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Solomon shook his head with gratification. But the universe was a f has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me his true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me an eternal life. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. After the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal to deal with you late, with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude magnitude of your failure. You three keep posts outside the door. Well, crap. I can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure if she had any other choice. See, what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rollo, you just need some time. Rollo, it's over. We lost. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a moment to calm my mind. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just we were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually Solomon would get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I d had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott has been, has, must have sensed his time at Perino Harvest was growing short. So he left behind a letter with the hope that it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but it's content. Look at... Uh, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did he say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott, Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest Nicomine. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did, did she? Is she? She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted perennial harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often the vanguard of sh change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control of something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable uh, conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hall. Chapter 8 
comeuppance. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Huh. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. Oh! It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Oh, she didn't use her her dynam dynamite on the source. Good. <coughs> Grin, what are you doing here? Look at what are you doing here? You're here. We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rollo. Hey, Mrs. Lucas Grant. Well, that's awful nice of you. But I'm fine. Oh no, what did they? Grant, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We got the party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We gotta stop him. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Oh, uh, no! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. I wouldn't be so sure of that. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little... Oh my gosh. Let's try junk. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realized he drank his own cigar ash. Mm -hmm. How did he, the ashes get to the vial? It was pretty easy to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, it's a bad habit anyways. Pa always say bad habits are like 50 yard fields gold. Huh? Hard to kick. You can all call me sharper valentine his body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist oh uh. <laughs> oh my gosh what oh my gosh well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. As the last of what was once sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines, a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well... I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Oh! You actually can end that way? She seemed happy. The narrator was like, you know what? Good enough for me. I don't know. I want to see the other things. Uh... Let's try malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. Malice? The whiskey from his office? Yep, do that. An unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. 
You could ca all call me Shopper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh my gosh! What a party! Now that's what they call 80 poof whiskey. Damn, dude. The crowd gazed in stunned Boop. silence at the now empty Boop. stage. Boop. Party! Party! The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was... unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Okay, let's try now. Change. Might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny. Yeah, I popped it in the vial when no one was looking. What was the what's that going to do? Well no idea, what well, that's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand. Oh, he's gonna turn he into dollars. Into a belching green mist. He's gonna turn into uh, into uh, a mountain of dollar bills. Oh! Holy crap! He's a baby. Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he know was no longer matters. <laughs> this is an innocent child. I, ap I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we? What would? What do? What Valentines always do? What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father or young sharper. That would be a great help, thank you. Uh, are they gonna now raise their father? That is so funny. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. <laughs> Epilogue. Epilogue! Pine's coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. We found the actual ending? And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. We found the actual ending, I think. Uh, let's explore some more. Rolo, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be in there in a mi minute. Uh. Okay, we have to go to the... Over time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. Nice. Uh, let's 
see here. Oh no, that's uh, let's just do. Uh, I think there's nothing here. We're, we can go. Let's go to the treehouse. I can't believe this is the actual ending. I hear you and uh, you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity. One Rolo, one Nuka rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop going? It's been great. I hope it helps me get into the School of Art Agriculture up to this at State. Also, Nelly sh she said she's been writing a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rollo. He's grown so fast, and, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I just don't... I don't just mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. While well, some of, of that might be of his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell me this, but it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of this little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, and, but he's just damn proud to tell you. I know. Uh, okay, hold on. Oh, oh yeah, we have to go this way. Hey Gus, how's the tree plant going? The tree planting going? Could be better. I'm so grateful Il to Ilona and Nelly for her letting me help. I was just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's next? When perennial harvest collapsed, most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Ah, How about with a knack of for art can help paint the new office? You can count on us. Well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never felt... I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. But this right here... This is something I can be proud of. Aww. Um. How's the napping this morning? The most underrated part of a good nap is the view. And the view's getting greener every day. Nice. I see you decided on the name. Yeah, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and dirty harvest is now official. I like it. It was actually Nelly's idea. There's still a lot of work to do and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is go slow and fix things. Amen to that. Uh, I kind of want to go check on everybody before I go to the treehouse. Uh, Young Mr. Van Horn. How's the little Solomon uh, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Uh, was, has he, um, you know, attempted to crawl out of a script and plot world domination? Yeah? Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Maud Hill and she feels that Chopper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is an unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That's the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I am endeavoring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job. And this whole town is ready to help you help out uh, however we can. I can't wait to teach him to throw a baseball. Eris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. What's today's news that needs knowing? 
I'll give you the tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of the Iceman Clement at the State Correctional Facility. I hear there was an, a dry ha- eye in the house. Well, I guess he has plenty of time to work on his craft. That's so funny. He looked at, to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. The end. Closing her eyes, Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Ah, oh, she finished her book. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think you're pretty much up to speed. She finally finished her book. Look at, do you want a biscotti? On the house. I don't have the time. There you are, you gotta come and see this. I finally did it. I pulled the perfect espresso. Oh, Lumi. See, she wrote, or she read the whole game. She didn't even notice anything. Uh, wait, war domination? What? Really? While well, I was reading? <laughs> if I didn't know it better, I would think you're proud of something. As if I know. It's too late. You are now officially a person that cares. Oh, welcome back, Blue. We are just finishing up the game. Wow, back for seconds? If it's not too much trouble, for the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of the ice cream. It serves no purpose. Other than just be to be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. But it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> Look, at, can I tr interest you in a delicious apple? He playfully waggled an apple. No thanks, I'm just saying hello. Well, hello then. Am I telling your mom we need a new crate of jam? Already? It's funny, I used to hide this stuff in the back. Terrified that someone would find out our secret messages. Now everyone everyone wants to get their hands on Elnor Van Horn's famous spice jam. Hey Luca, can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making this me stock the shelves for the summer. He said it builds character. I think he meant to say builds calluses. Builds character. Yeah, I built something, all right. Okay. I did it! Smack. I hit the watermelon 20 times, hell yeah. Um. Anything else? Here? Ooh. Yawn. I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? Nope, I hope everything I need... I got everything I need. Thanks again for that. I sent a draft of the story to a reporter in the capital city. And they offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation? that picked up an entire tons of people and moved them up to co cover a massive illegal mine shaft full of incredibly hazardous chemicals? So it writes itself, if you think about it. Just don't forget forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter. Carol City isn't that far away. I'm gonna ha have to come back from time to time to check in. Honestly, Blue, uh, are you working on my logo right now? Honestly, Blue, you should just stick to doing something simple like... Like, honestly, I'm not asking for perfection. I just want a logo to be done before Halloween. And there's only like 
there's only 15 days until a Halloween. And so far I don't have a logo. So like, I, I literally don't care if you just give me a logo that's like just colors and that's it, that's all. <laughs> Honestly. That's too, unlock it. That's a bit too much. <laughs> See what sort of new trouble you got yourself into. Like it doesn't. If we have an unlurk coming, it's fine. But like, I don't feel. Eh. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventure days are over. Ah, we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call your reporter's intuition. Maybe I'll have a sequel, that's cool. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? That? It's two weeks of in inuncumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sad margaritas and forgotten obligations. Excuse me. Love to place an order. Mrs. Fratelli sighed. With a zen like calm. As soon as I as the lunch rush ends, I'll be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation? For the first time in years. And I've got you and your mom to think. Why's that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are gonna fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. Oh, it's fine, I'll wait. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can go... Oh, yeah. Let's go inside and see what people has to say. Over the school year, Kado and Bert had become close friends. But did you know that when they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus? Yeah, and they are studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Beacon Pies is now the smallest town in the county? Yep, close to a population before perennial harvest moved in. It typically went on like this for quite some time. Ah. Uh, I can't believe it's over. Yeah, the town's really started to take turn a new leaf. The town? I was talking about Hank Atomic. I just finished the last issue. How was it? As great as always. Hank finally returned to Earth, and I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. It just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? You could ask Miss Ash about what she's always reading. She seems to really enjoy it. Oh no, maybe she's reading Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. We all do that. She's reading porn. over Piper's shoulder, laid stealthily inside a large volume of mathematics, was the first issue of Hank Atomic. Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? Do you mind not telling anyone? I've kind of got a reputation to uphold. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads a Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What I'd give to start over fresh, to experience it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of uh, of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go. Sure thing. Ah, this is how I am with Nancy Drew. Like when people play Nancy Drew for the first time, oh, please tell me more. Tell me all about it. <laughs> hey, I'm Mr. Nuncrete. I'm gonna see my go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? After, even after everything I did, you still. Mr. Nuncrete shook his head. You're all your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt by all time. You run along now. What in the. Who the fuck are these people? Oh my gosh! Who are these five baby rabbits? Gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. 
Come on, come on. No one is too big, no one is too small. For Jeff's wild ride. Maybe not completely unused. Join one piece of candy. For the ride of your life. Who's next? Me, 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 me. Um. Uh, there's nobody this way. Oh, guess what? Eh, yesterday I saw a, a dynasty statues. Oh, that and that's good. It's great. I haven't spotted one of those of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pie is gonna become the bug capital of the can county. Um, is there anything this way? No. Okay, I think we can go back to the tree house. Uh, but first, I want to. I just unlocked a smack. I want to see if it unlocked anything. Oh yeah, no smack didn't didn't unlock anything. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Long way to go back to the tree house. Oh. Okay, get this. I made sure real in an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah, and honest to goodness. Flip flopping, swim swimming, fish. I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. Been at least seven years since I've caught one. I'd say it's a good omen. What do you think? What do you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. I'm hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Aww. <laughs> a little higher. Yep. A little lower. Yep. A little higher. Yep. I'm telling ya, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. They, 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 they haven't fixed Rolo. Poor Rolo. Look at there you are. Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of the N10 I re redesigned. Fine, fine. Iggy, just... Don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yup. They'll be fine, right? They'll be fine. If we really want Mission Control to turn to some, into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. Oh, you're right. Lead the way. Oh, now we have to go see Beck. Wait, hold on. I want to talk to you. Dang it, I can't talk to them. I already talked to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I already talked to everybody at least. So we're like hanging out with like an, an adult Rolo. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's still like, he's still a, 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 like a teen in his head. I have news I think you enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot, lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided to this place is root worthy. You're gonna be stuck with me for this unforeseeable future. I don't have to warn you, most years aren't gonna be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before you go, there's a bit of a surprise. Aww. 
My mom's prepared this street especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. This should be okay in the cold of old big pines. It thrive as it thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. When you're ready, take Jeff's water ride to Old Beacon Pines. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot. This rides on the house. You wanna ride? I wanna hang on tight onto that little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks! I only did what I, any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you something, some, give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild ride, a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always says the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I felt like a dang cello. If you ever stop like stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know you don't even have to say it. You two make a an awesome pair. Excuse me, we're a trio now. Yeah, I thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? <laughs> Let me tell you a story about a man named Hank Catonic. Oh god. I won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start a summer. <laughs> You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I just ask a question? Do you ever dream about that? Night, not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looks like, forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives in, on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you a, two a moment. Aww. Hey, Dad. Dr. Mo Will says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you don't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. gosh this is so so sad <laughs> close the book 
That's it. Oh my gosh, we reached the end of the game. There is one one uh, branch we haven't done yet. So after the credits, we're gonna go back. But it's not gonna do much. It was such a good game! It was such a good game. I honestly, I was blown away. Blown, blown away. I was right to like... I was right to to end the stream because we were not close to the end. Well, yeah, we needed a new, we needed another one. We needed another another stream to complete it. Just in time because I mean. I usually stream for like four hours and there's like like 45 minutes left I might just I I said that I would if like we ended the stream early I would then I would try to play another short game but this uh, we're finishing a little bit later than I expected, so... So, yeah. Oh, yeah, this was, a uh, this was on... Was it on Kickstarter, this game? So adorable. Is... Is there a way to, to skip? There's a lot of backers. Right, Rex? <laughs> That's so weird. Chuck you. That is so funny. Oh my gosh, these names. Dog patch games. Um. Oh my gosh, Fanty Sai. Wow. J Joker one seven eight nine. <laughs> oh my gosh, Young Money Joseph, Young Money Carano. Oh my gosh, <laughs> not Young Money. <laughs> uh, Yoshi Brothers seventeen. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's. Crafty Fox. Oh my gosh. Mr. Joe with exclamation point. Young money! <laughs> oh my gosh. Pizza Illuminati. Oh my gosh, I love that one. Vampire Kitty. Mmm. Tenguk. Morphin time. Spark plug six 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 nine. Uh, nice. The creative fun by backer kit. Backer kit. Vivi. Uh. Oh. There you go. Ten years later. Oh my gosh. There's more. Wow, nice kick. Shopper, did you find it? Yeah! Uh-oh. I found... Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Oh, we have, yeah, we have the op option to do other stuff here. Let me see. Yeah, we didn't... We didn't do weep. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. 
falling to his knees. Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This all this all makes sense now, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncrete. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll all we'll see where their loyalties fall. Jibber Perdon! Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. And everybody dies. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncrete moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, you must be willing to. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. And ice everywhere. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Okay, uh, I think I did everything, yeah. Just make you sure. Yeah, I think I, I did all of them. Yeah, the tree is looks complete. Yeah, the tree looks complete. Uh, let me see though. Uh, let me see though. Did I get all the all the awards and shit? It says it takes like f it takes five hours to complete the story. Absolutely not. It it took way more than that. It took me way more than that for me to finish it. I just want to see the. No, I, I wanna I wanna see the the rewards. Oh okay. Let me see. So I, okay, I close the book, play the funky music. Duh, duh, duh. Oh, wait. There's a way to get the secret success. What? Wait. There's a secret success that I did unlock. What? That's what it says. Continue to play to, to unblock the secret su success. What? Hold on. No, 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 no. You... Oh, you have to catch all the fish. Oh my gosh. Wait, hold on. Okay, um... Let me... Let, let, let's go back to the angle. Potion with a little change. Let, let's try to, to, to do this quickly. I want to catch all the fish. Mm -hmm. 
This is was so funny. Eris, she look. That baby looks like no, doesn't look okay. That baby looks angry. Okay. And his mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Okay. Uh, all right, I think I need to go to the pond now. Quick, quick, quick. Um, I'm ignoring you. I think it's in the dream, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I have to keep doing that. Oh yeah, there are more stuff I can do. Luca Struggle. Luca finger on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. You have to reel it in a bit faster or your, your catch will lose interest. Hey. Uh... Luca placed a sinker on sometimes the All right. See here. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. I forgot how to do that. Luca placed a sink sometime. Okay, all right. Come on. Come on. Not too fast. Not all right oh malice 80 proof whiskey a hard liquor for a hard man best leave that be takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around uh punch wrapped a twig of time around the hook some fish have refined taste I didn't realize that there was more there, there were more stuff we could do here in that at that lake. There you go. What's that? Property of a sharper Valentine figures. If he had his way, property sh of sharper Valentine would be written on everything in this town. Should we give it back to him? He may not even want it back. The man's got a contentious relationship with time. We'll keep it here in case he ever wants to pick it up. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, what's that? It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Mm, look at those two young fools. How they end up in at the bottom of the pond. We can, who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come does he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new jobs at Valentine's. Oh, what's the new job going to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. And uh, finally, smack! Luke stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, beads. Should we give it to mom? She acts jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Bokuru. But I'm not sure she fully appreciate a palm bracelet. Uh, is that it? Oh, 
Wait, I did it all, but I don't know. Luca place to think sometime. I I feel like I found everything. I feel like I found everything though. Mm. Uh let me see here. Oh no no, that's not I found a whole bunch of stuff here. Mm. Uh, let me. S I didn't get the. I didn't get that secret achievement. Uh, that means I'm missing something. I kind of want to look it up. Maybe I'm missing one of these actions. Let me see. Uh, beacon pines. A uh, fish. Fishing. A uh, agile angler. Uh, we got smack. We got crooked, pungent, struggle. Cling. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see here. Okay, so we got tickle. We got junk. We got pull. Oh, we're missing cling. Talk to Yisun outside of the History Museum the day after Rolo is missing. Struggle with rendezvous. With, uh, struggle during a rendezvous with Roxy. Oh, after that's... Strangle, pungent, cooked, and smack. Okay, we were missing. Okay. Luca wrapped a twig thumb fish half Okay, well, uh, we're gonna uh, go. So, after Rolo went missing, so here, right? Um. So run a uh, struggle during rendezvous with Roxy. Um. Let's uh, let's. Well, time to bust out the strange. Okay. Back step the only. Side. Okay, let's at the side, Iggy's Iggy's clothes. Iggy's voice. Oh god. Oh yeah, I remember that. The person the yeah, we already went through this. Um Okay, let's Um Oh yeah, he's gonna yell. Uh, he's gonna laugh, uh, lie to us, and say that he came back home. I hope I get to go to the museum after that. Oh no, no, no! Don't go at night. A wave of regret if he hurt. Is chapter R hot? Do good. No, no, no. Okay, fuck. This is not what I wanted. Um, let's try ag again, but let's choose Tickle. Well, time to bust out the Tickles. <laughs> Tears. Back redouble. <laughs> Iggy's eyes started around. Iggy kicked. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair. Oh yeah, the 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 white hair. You know what? White hair is not so bad. It's not so bad. Roxy and it was okay. 
Roxy, but this her eyes in a torrent. Okay, I need to go to the. Oh, come on, I don't have time for this. I need to go to the museum. Roxy, the fidget. Roxy, Drew. Roxy, Drew. Come on, come on. Let's go wipe to. Looking into the puddle. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna wait to to at the treehouse. I'm gonna go to the museum. Oh yeah. Luca motion. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Yeah, there was a way to skip all of that. I Mr. forgot. Gently play. Okay, this is a part where gotta there was a deep gotta lie. Settled. Not shame, malice. There was a like a trap. Right. Damn. Luca okay. Something he did. Look at twist. Okay, let's uh. Skip all that. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Onward to the museum. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I hope. I hope that whoever Albison is there. Is that? Oh no, Yis Yisun is not here? I don't get it. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. Di is what it? What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines I okay. I I uh, hold on a sec. I'm I'm gonna. Maybe I'm I'm misunderstanding that. Honestly, though, if we don't get that achievement, it's okay. But like, I have no idea. Oh no, yeah, it's Valentine's fertilizer company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for uh, but then tragedy. Yeah, I I I don't see where it is. An accident which took Shopper away from us. I don't think I can get the secret secret success. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Shopper Valentine lives on. Um I think I have to go way further, like, I have to go th do all, through the whole, like, kidnapping and then go to the museum. It's gonna be, a uh, it's gonna be a, a pain in the ass keeping through all of that. So I think I'm gonna just stop right here. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna stop right here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to, like through oh all of that but anyway this this is gonna be it for tonight oh yeah i guess i did say that if i still had some time left i would read the spooky story for today so that's what i'm gonna do um well, yeah, I still have time for a spooky story, and then I'm going to raid someone. It's a bit long, though, but I... not too long. Alright. Is everybody ready for a spooky story? Anyway, here we go. My boyfriend, who I lived with, worked as a teacher in a town about... Oh! Yeah, no, you know what? This music is a little bit... 